Have you heard the good news? The war on terror is over. I missed the parade. Actually, I wonder who won. But anyway, it's over. The uh, Barack Obama administration announced yesterday that there was no more war on terror. In case you missed it, it's uh, all done. The uh, United States government is no longer going to speak about terrorism in connection with attacks by Islamic jihadists on United States personnel or institutions. And the uh, government is not going to speak about Islamic jihadists at all because the word jihad in Arabic means struggle and there are so many different struggles in Arabic, many of which are noble and that therefore, said the government spokesman who was talking about this yesterday, it would be only to give legitimacy to the, uh, uh, what do you call them? You can't call them terrorists. To those people, it would give them legitimacy if you called them jihadis. Now, there are a number of problems with this, and one of them is that that means that the only people who will be calling them jihadis are the jihadis themselves. And why does this matter? What does it matter what we call them, or whether the war on terror is over or not, or whether we speak about it in terms of Islamic Jihad or not? Why should this make a difference? All this has to do with an initiative that is widely known as the Stealth Jihad. And what it has to do with the Stealth Jihad is this, if you do not know, it's an ancient principle of warfare that you may have heard. In order to defeat an enemy, you have to understand that enemy. You have to know who he is, you have to know why he is doing what he's doing, you have to know what he hopes to accomplish. And if you do not understand those things, then you have no chance of victory, then it's all over. And so, the first thing that the United States government ought to have done on September 11, 2001, and actually ought to have been doing before that because 9-11 was not the first attack by these people on the United States personnel or institutions. The first thing that the United States government should have done was to examine the speeches and the writings of the perpetrators and their allies and to come to some understanding of who they are why they are doing what they're doing, and what they hope to accomplish. And this was not done. Eight years later, this has still not been done. Not only has it not been done, and there is even less prospect of it ever being done, now that the Obama administration has declared the war on terror over and jihad out of bounds as a point of discussion, but also the fact is that the Islamic jihadists have un undertaken a large-scale initiative over a period of many years to achieve precisely this goal. And if anybody was a victor in the Obama administration's announcement yesterday, it was the forces of the global jihad. The stealth jihad is this. It's an initiative to advance the agenda of the terrorists by non-terrorist means. Everybody knows there are terrorists, and everybody knows that they flew the plane into the building on 9-11 and into the Pentagon and so on. What were they trying to accomplish? Very many fewer people know that. But if you look at the writings of Osama bin Laden and other people like him, they, it becomes very clear that what they wanted to do was weaken the United States, and what they still hope to do is weaken and ultimately destroy the United States and ultimately replace the free constitutional rule that we enjoy, or still enjoy to some degree, in the United States with Islamic law. And Islamic law institutionalizes discrimination against women, discrimina discrimination against non-Muslims, and extinguishes the freedom of speech, the freedom of conscience, and other things. And this is the vision of Islamic law that they are actively working to replace the U.S. Constitution with. Now, that initiative is advanced by terrorist acts because those terrorist acts, they take our money, they take our time, they take our resources, they weaken us. 
but there are also many other groups that are working to achieve the same goal, the imposition of Islamic law over the United States, over Western Europe, and over our allies. But they are advancing it by means that have nothing to do with terrorist attacks. And one of the primary ways that they are trying to advance this goal is by making it out of bounds, ruling it out of bounds, making it something that's beyond the limits of polite society to speak about the Islamic motivations, or in general, the motives and goals of the jihadists. Because the motives and goals of the jihadists always go back to Islam. If you read what they say, if you study their writings and their teachings and their actions, they're always going back to Islam. They're always saying, we are doing this because the Islamic religion teaches us to wage war against unbelievers in order to bring them under the rule of the Islamic social order. And they're very clear about this. But then there's a funny thing. You know, a sleight of hand trick, a uh, really a kind of prestidigitation that is worthy of the most talented ma magician in the world. The trick is, is to that the organization of the Islamic Conference, which is 57 Muslim governments around the world, the largest voting bloc at the United Nations right now, is undertaken an international initiative at the United Nations and elsewhere to pressure Western governments to criminalize what they call Islamophobia, to criminalize, essentially, criticism of Islam. But what's criticism of Islam by their definition? It is speaking about the motives and goals of the terrorists because the terrorists always refer to Islam to explain what they're doing. So why is that a magician's trick? Because look, some of the Islamic jihadists say things like this. The Muslim Brotherhood, which is an international organization that is also active in the United States and a key part of the stealth jihad movement, the non-terrorist attempts to impose Islamic law, to bring Islamic law west, the Muslim Brotherhood, this is from an internal Muslim Brotherhood document, must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and Allah's religion is made victorious over all other religions, which is ultimately not a religious statement at all, but a political one, because Allah's religion, as they understand it, is, has a political extension, a political manifestation that they are working to bring here. Now, when the Muslim Brotherhood said that they were engaged in a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within, the organization of the Islamic Conference said nothing and did nothing. And when the Muslim Brotherhood worked on that agenda, the organization of the Islamic Conference said and did nothing. However, when other people, non-Muslim anti-terror analysts and activists began to quote the Muslim Brotherhood, saying that they wanted to destroy Western civilization from within, that was an act of hatred. That was hate speech. That was Islamophobia. That was bigotry and racism. That's the magician's trick that's been done here. There's a politician in the Netherlands named Heert Wilders, and he is a very heroic individual who has published a film, produced a film, called Fitna, which you should look up on the internet if you have not seen it. It's 15 minutes of your life well spent. Fitna, F-I-T-N-A, and you can find it on the Jihad Watch website and elsewhere. And Fitna is a very simple film. It quotes passages of the Quran, the Muslim holy book, and then shows Muslim preachers preaching about those passages of the Quran and exhorting violence against unbelievers, and then shows Muslims blowing things up as a result of that kind of teaching. Very simple. If there's any hate speech involved in it, it is the hate preachers who are filmed in this, who are featured in Fitna, saying you have to wage war, you have to fight against the Jews and the Christians, you have to destroy them, you have to slay them wherever you find them, and so on. However, Geert Wilders was widely criticized and is actually being prosecuted now for hate speech in the Netherlands and widely criticized all over Europe and all over the world for, and I'm not making this up, linking Islam with terrorism. Now, you have to follow this very carefully. Geert Wilders did not link Islam with terrorism. The Islamic preachers in his film linked Islam with terrorism, and he reported on it. That is a very crucial distinction. 